One reason Alabama is the SEC champ and still alive in the national championship race is our next guest. Uh, he is the quarterback of the Crimson Tide, Blake Sims. Blake, thank you very much for, for joining us, and uh, congratulations. I can only imagine uh, your feelings right now. Uh, thank you so much, and uh, thank you for having me today. And uh, my feelings are great right now. I'm just happy for my teammates, the way they performed in the SEC championship, and the way that we have drove over the year and uh, just thankful for having a great coach like Coach Saban and him bringing in Coach Kiffin to lead the offense the right way and give us the opportunity to make, uh, put many points on the board. Uh, of all the great scenes of this season, and certainly uh, you have created many, whether it was the comeback uh, in, in Baton Rouge or certainly uh, the win over Auburn or the championship. Uh, the one that struck me, I was, uh, I was on a program and I looked behind me and I saw you over there lifting up your daughter. Uh, describe the feelings that must have, uh, you must have had there and, and what that meant to you. Uh, it meant a lot. You know, I wouldn't want to spend any other moment but with my daughter. You know, uh, seeing her smile, knowing, knowing that she's understanding the game now, and so, so when she knows that we have won the game, you know, it's not a better smile than seeing her smile. And uh, I'm just happy to have her there so she can experience the things that I'm experiencing right now and uh, just be sitting beside me smiling. Blake, this is the part of the interview that I, I have uh, been uh, dreading. This is the part of the interview where I, I say to you directly uh, how silly you, you have made me look and, and, and many of my colleagues because, uh, let's be honest, uh, we doubted you. I said this to Coach Saban after the game, and he said, hey, don't feel badly. I, I, I once uh, moved Blake to, to running back. Talk about uh, what you've had to overcome from the criticism and even your own, uh, your own coaches uh, to become uh, the person you are today and, and, and the leader of this college football team. Um, there, was, there was many doubts, but uh, I try to keep – try to stay away from that and just try to stay into, inside the team, you know, and uh, just try to let my teammates know that I'm here and I'm willing to do whatever I got to do and I'm ready to go to work every Saturday. And um, just just happy that I had the guys behind me that wanted to go to work, the linemen willing to take time out of their day so they can learn the blocking scheme. So when Saturday came, they knew what they had to do. The wide receivers stayed with me at the practice. We had uh, we worked on our time and throwing the ball. Um, the running backs getting first down. We needed first down. We, we had three yards to get a first down on third downs. And um, I'm just glad. And uh, I can tell you this, that if this was months, months ago, I wouldn't think I'd be where I am now. Yeah, I, I, I appreciate the, the it hasn't bothered you, but I remember reading a story that it certainly bothered some in your family. Have you been had to you know, calm some of them down when, 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 they, when they've heard and read the, the criticism of you over these many months? Oh, uh, yeah, I did. I had, I had to calm them down. You know, <laughs> uh, they called me many, many times. I'd be like, man, you got to stay off the phone. Stay off the phone. Like, don't look at that stuff. Somebody calls you about it, be like, hey, I'm not worried about it. I'm just trying to get my son to be ready so when his opportunity comes, he takes full advantage of it. What has Lane Kiffin meant to you and your progression this year as Alabama's starting quarterback? Uh, he has meant a lot to me. He has, taught, he has taught me to keep my composure when the game is close. He has taught me how to go through my read, read the defense. He has also taught me how to smile when things are going wrong, how, to, how much my body language count towards the team and he, has, he also taught me how to overcome adversity. And uh, that, them the main things he has really taught me. I mean, you, you've had a lot of adversity this year, and, and I, I know quarterbacks are confident people. I, I work with a few now and then. But uh, was, was there ever that moment this year uh, that you, kn you knew you had to go out there and, and do the best, but uh, things, were, things were on the edge, uh, things were on the brink? Um, I would say Arkansas. You know, it was a big game that – you know, we was on the edge, but um, I had to trust Coach Kiffin, play call and go out and try to execute the best way. And um, I think that's when me and Coach Kiffin and the whole offense came together. And we knew that um, when times come rough, that we, if we come together and do what we got to do, great things can come out. What about the Auburn game when uh, it seemed like everything that, that could go wrong did go wrong? And uh, I know you've answered the question about seeing uh, – Jacob Coker warming up on the sidelines, but uh, you were you were you were pretty close to uh, the end there. What was that like? Uh, I just try to control what I can control. My next opportunity to go in 
for the next drive. I just say, hey, I'm going to put um, put the ball in the end zone. Maybe I'll put this ball in the end zone, Coach Saban. I could probably change his decision, and hopefully that's what I could do. But uh, if Jacob was to come in, I knew that he was going to – I had full confidence, just like the coaches did, that he was going to come in and perform that the best way that he could, and he was going to bring us to a W. Blake, it has been an extraordinary run, and uh, we, we, we've harped on, on the criticism. That's not what you're about. Uh, you have become uh, the team leader uh, on this uh, Crimson Tide team. Let's talk for just a moment about uh, one of your, your teammates. I know you don't like to, to uh, isolate them, but Amari Cooper uh, likely will be a finalist for the Heisman Trophy. Uh, he may not win, but that's not, not the point. What's it like uh, having him as one of your teammates and one of your go-to receivers? Uh, he's a guy that has pushed me a lot of ways, you know. It was sometimes that um, that I felt tired or whatever, but uh, just knowing that he was coming up here working, you know, I didn't want to leave him alone. So I just went up to him one day and said, hey, I'm going to come up here with you any time of the day. It don't matter if it's 12 o'clock at night or 10, or it doesn't matter. Whenever you up here, I'm up here with you. Just call me and I'm going to come, and that's exactly what we did. And uh, I think the things that happened when the camera wasn't on, that's what made us so good this year. And uh, he worked so hard, and uh, he rose off on a lot of our players, and he's a great leader on our team. Moving ahead to uh, the next game, Ohio State, uh, as I'm sure you know, they're down to the third-string quarterback. I have a feeling you can probably relate to uh, what Jones has had to overcome. Uh, talk a little bit about this game going up against uh, the Buckeyes and Urban Meyer in the national semifinal. Uh, the quarterback that's playing now, I know that uh, I'm very you know, happy for him for the way that he performed last week because uh, even though I know when I was a backup, you know, I always saw AJ go down. I kind of get, like, nervous and be like, dang, this is my opportunity. <laughs> but uh, but it's, God gave him the strength to get back up and perform very well. But uh, Ohio State's a great team. You know, they got a very good history. It's going to be a very good game. It's going to be a lot of emotional and um they're going to come ready to play, and um, we just hopefully we can have a good week of practice and do what we have to do in the game time. I know there's not a lot of downtime, but, the, but there'll be a little bit of a break uh, over the holidays. How do you plan to uh, use uh, your first free time in a very long time? Uh, just a lot of treatment. Uh, a lot of meetings with Coach Kiffin and Coach Saban, just, just trying to realize what my weaknesses are and try to, make them, and try to strengthen them and just try to get with my teammates and just talk and try to see what, just try to pick their brains a little bit and, and just get a lot of treatment. Well, Blake, congratulations again. Uh, I, I think uh, the entire uh, Alabama fan base uh, is proud of what you've accomplished. People that have never met you, I, I think, have been inspired by your story. I hope you, uh, I hope you only uh, good luck and, and much success. Merry Christmas, and thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you so much. You got it. See you soon. Blake Sims, nice enough to join us and Tusco, listen, what an incredible story that has been. We'll take a short break.